Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 50, right smack dab in the middle of December, mostly, kind of, yeah. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be here right now. And let's jump into the agenda. Uh, we'll do triage, and uh, I was asked to put bug 4474 on the uh, triage list, so we'll go look at that as well. Um, then we'll talk about the recently named Wix 3.9 R2 release coming to, uh, well, a release page to you soon, even though it's already available. Then we'll do the usual questions and comments, um, things like that, although I expect we're probably going to be talking a lot about the R2 release and not a whole lot else. Triage. Bob, you ready? I am loaded. All right, all right. Five bugs, although some of these feel like old, but maybe not. Um, that one's old. This one is old, yes. So, Wix Standard B, set up successful message, all that. Uh, yeah, Sean, I saw a message uh, from you this morning uh, on that pull request. Um, I have not had a chance to go to the link. Is it by any chance me who says that we can't do that? Do you remember the context? Mostly because the uh, the way the code's written, it, it correctly adapts to the presence of or absence of the extra controls. So it wouldn't prevent an existing customized theme from from working with the new uh, Wix standard BA code. So I, I don't think uh, m my objection originally was. Um, uh, was that it, it made it harder to move, primarily to V4, but I, I don't, given the way that we're adapting the uh, theme util and the conditional controls, or conditional text anyway, um, I don't think I don't think that's a real problem. So as long as the code works with old and new themes alike, I don't think that that would be a blocker for 3x. But I'm willing to be, you know, proven wrong. Uh, Jacob, it's yeah, it's un uninstall and repair, and well, currently that's it. Well, no, Tobias, this doesn't cover other scenarios because it's hard coded for just these two. In Wix four, we have a more complete solution that changes everything. <laughs> but makes it work better. Well, and that's just the current code. The current code set handles unin or sorry, the current pull request um, handles it, it actually handles everything but modify. So it does handle repair. It handles the top level actions other than modify, which truthfully makes sense because Wix standard BA doesn't really support modify. You enter a maintenance mode that you can only do uninstall and repair from. So you know, as far as what actually works uh, in Wix standard BA, I think it covers everything, which was way back one of my objections. It's like, yes, uninstall is an important thing that maybe we want to, you know, call out separately, but at the same time, there's all these other things, and if it's important for uninstall, why isn't it important for repair, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the current pull request handles all of that. So we're taking this. Because it, it basically is adaptive. Yes, I, I don't see a blocker. Is where I'm where I'm at. I lost my mouse cursor again. Um, I'm fine That's... with that. I, I don't like the uh, the extra duplication of effort to maintain all this junk, but there's no way around that. So it is what that is. What that is. Yeah. Well, I mean, the duplication is primarily in strings, which we're going to have no matter what language being language. Um, I think you know. Mm, fair enough. It, it, it's it's we're following two different paths, but you know we've already forked the the evolutionary tree between three and four. So it is what it is. Yeah, basically. Yep. All right. Sean just said it's. He he sees the code now. That's cool. That works. All right. All right. Output name in Wix project cannot be parameterized because it's always rewritten. 
it's impossible to set any predefined name in a custom template based on Wix project file because it is always oh in a template custom project template because of this code in Wix project node the code does not check where the output is already being set oh this is a votive thing yes okay I I can kind of see what they're saying so it uh, always yeah. ends up writing the project name right right yeah okay we could take that in 3x Sure. I don't think it would be breaking. You'd have to write a customized template that expected it to overwrite something that... No, you pretty much expect that to be a bug. <laughs> I want a dollar, whatever, whatever, and I didn't get it. So, yeah. Wix 3.9 doesn't complete sound station with start from an SSH session. Oh, interesting. This was interesting. Thanks for picking this up, Sean. That It's going back and forth that it's going to take to figure this thing out. Oh, NetFX 4 interesting. It's not us, yeah. actually. It's NetFX4. That's... Oh, no, that's kind of weird. That's us not able to write a message to our pipe. Well, this is after... Um, oh, no, screen did go black. Why did the screen go black? Ah. The the pipe errors are coming after, uh, after this code or whatever uh, terminates what I believe is the uh, elevated process. Interesting. Because it timed out. Oh, so, oh, timed out. But well, timed out sorry, because sorry. The timeout is, in, is on this person's script. This person wrote a script to install Wix 3.9 uh, remotely, I'm assuming, or into a VM. And his code has a timeout that says after 1,000 seconds, oh. it kills, quote unquote, the Wix 3.9 process, but I think it's just killing the elevated process. Oh. Well, yeah, don't do that. You can't kill processes like that. You expect <laughs> things to be happy. All right, this is the well, I mean, that's, you can't save that, yourself from an elevator process coming around and shooting you in the head a little bit. I mean, it's like, yeah, you're going to create a mess doing that, especially with installation. Although, fortunately, Burn should come back and say, hey, you're in the middle of a resume, and try to figure out whatever it can do. But in the end, I think it's just going to ignore that and just try to do an install again. Yeah, sure. He wants it to kill it. the child. You can't kill the child process if you're getting killed. I don't know. You can catch it and then kill the child and all that kind of stuff. And that's I don't know that expecting. we want to be killing an MSI process. No. 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 Obviously, the way is not to kill the processes. All right, next one. Um, <laughs> Killing stuff. <laughs> Bad. Listen to the name of it. They named it yeah. well. Minor upgrade. Doesn't change files if enable feature selection equals yes in MSI package. This is the third time I've seen this between Stack Overflow Wix users and the bug list. Um, is it all the same person? I believe so. Good. Well, they're they're going everywhere, basically getting confirmation that when it's doing that, because when applying minor upgrade, reinstall property is empty, but must be equals that or that during yeah. minor upgrade, changing the feature selection. But if you say enable feature selection, aren't you then responsible in the BA for enabling features? Yes. But do we, if you enable features, do we actually set reinstall? Do we actually set it correctly for minor during minor upgrade? I don't know. Enable feature selection is one of the you know dark areas. Files will be upgraded only if the feature isn't presented in previous setup and is presented in new setup. Because it's going to pick the new features up automatically. Because the new ones are absent, but it's trying to make it match the MSI state. So they go to whatever default state they are, which is presumably local. And that's why they come in. And the other ones then, because they're not in the add local, don't do anything. Although you would think, oh, but if we don't do a reinstall, equals all. But if you're doing feature selection, then you... Um, uh, Yes, need to look at that code to make sure that reinstall is set. Um, and it is reinstall, not reinstall. Um, but just, oh yeah, 
he got it right the first time. All right, just didn't want people getting confused there. Um, yeah, need to go look at that. Can I do that quickly, or am I going to end up big black window? No. Nope. Um, let me look real quick. Um, distract them, Bob. Um. <laughs> oh, look, I'm juggling. <laughs> well done. Um, reinstall. So I'm I'm looking in Burns um, uh, MSI engine code, and I found the bootstrapper action minor upgrade. So if you don't specify features, we set reinstall equal to all. And if you do specify features. Do we not set? All right. So now I'm trying to figure out where we set the features into there. The question is, what's the default coming to the callback from the engine in a minor upgrade? True. Right. That looks good. So, and so when we ask for all the features during a minor upgrade, the feature actions must not be must not be. So it does look like we're trying. We will set reinstall. Um, yeah. Um, so I expect we're doing the right thing. Um, but you probably do have to restate all of your feature states that you want installed on local, on minor upgrade. So your question as to what was our default, you know, for all that kind of stuff. Mm hmm is a good question. So I think we should resolve this by design and tell him to look at his log file and see what the feature states were. And I expect he'll see that they were not on during minor upgrade. And then sure. if he wants to try to reopen this bug and provide that log file and point out that what's in the log file isn't a good idea, we can do that. But from my quick cursory look at the code, it seems like we should be handling this correctly. And if not, a log file will show us and he can give that to us. Okay. That works. Package group with ID that causes an error, even if it, that is not is not listed on that okay. documentation, was fine in 3.8. Causes an error is very, very sad making. I don't, a, a package group with that ID causes an error, even if it was not listed in the documentation, was fine in 3.8. Oh, Sean, that's probably it. Yeah. Yes, and, and stating the actual error message would have been very useful in determining that. Um, yes, I suspect that's true um, because we don't have the EULA links for 452 mm -hmm. or 46 or anything going forward, and there's an open bug in 310 on that. Um, we, if you link in 452 web, it's going to fail because the bind, bind time variables for the EULAs don't exist. Um, then this worked in 3.8? No. No. <laughs> that was fine in 3.8. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will take this bug assigned to me in 3.10, and I will repro the problem. Okie dokie. I'm glad you I agree that. with Sean. It's a different... Um, the, it isn't documented. The, those IDs are not documented, and that's a bug, which I will open. Or it could be this bug, because this does talk about documentation. But that's a good point. Just add some words and... Which is... Probably some, the documentation should mention the problem with the EULA variables. So not if you're going to fix it in 310. 
Well, yes, that's a good point. Don't exactly have the fix yet, but... Different problem. Well, yep, yep, <laughs> no, that's yep. not a different problem. It's a related problem. <laughs> it's definitely related, but it's distinct. Uh, yeah. All right, all right, I'll let you decide how you want to make this bug tie into the that other bug with relation to documentation and everything. Okay. Um, it would not be horrible to update the documentation for Wix NetFX extension. That makes a call out about Wix 3.9, even though we sure. fix it in 3.10, because then when people hit this in 3.9, they'll be like, oh, right. I have to do X. And then in 3.10, I don't have to do X anymore because it will be done for me. Yeah, no, uh, yeah it's, I need to document it anyway because in 3.10, the solution is going to be to ship the ELAs. Um, as uh, payloads, so. All right, and Sean just confirmed the same thing happens for four, five, one, and three, eight. So, okay. all right, good, good, cool. On to next bug that wanted to be discussed. Oh yes. Uh, so, uh, well, the the title is uh, pretty pretty accurate. Um, well done, Sean. The, yes, you, you you look at the binary zip and. The headers for the native SDK are at the top top level of the SDK folder, um, and then the libraries are in versioned directories underneath it. In the installer, the headers are under the versioned directories next to the libraries. Oh, that's kind of weird, isn't it? So, obviously, the headers are identical between versions. It's just the libraries that are different. So the binary zip layout makes more sense. And it's also more like how um, the Windows SDK works, right. for example. So I, I you know, did up a solution in 3.9, but it was late. And it's a breaking change because, well, your headers move. So. I postponed it till 3.10. Now we're at the point where it's still a breaking change. <laughs> it is still a breaking change. So, uh, you know, I figured it'd be good to talk about here. It's like, do we want to take the breaking change? Is, you know, eliminating the, the duplicate headers a good thing? You know, should we change the binary zip instead of the installer? Um, basically, you know, you have, you have multiple choices here. Um, I'm aiming for consistency. And I don't particularly care uh, one way or the other. I I believe the 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 zip file is more correct, single headers. Yeah. Um, now there is one downside of doing it in the installer. The way we're doing it in the installer is we're essentially we are duplicating the headers in the in the MSI. Um, uh, sorry, MSIs. Uh, so now we have some shared components. If you install multiple versions, if you have multiple versions of VS, and we install multiple, um, multiple, ver yeah, multiple versions of the native SDK, those are now you know shared components and ref counted and and all that, which is fine. I mean, we're using star good, so everything everything magically yeah. works. So, Sean brought up a good idea of what if we put the headers in the new place and leave them in the old place in 3x. So basically, have more copies of the headers, <laughs> but then it's not breaking. Um. Yeah. Interesting. Sorry, I'm now thinking how we would do that without. Duplicating source code. Okay. Or doing a bunch of copy files. I don't want to do. No. I'd like to avoid that if possible. Yeah, especially since they're shared. Um, yes, 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 yes. I'm interested to see what Bob <laughs> says since he shot me down really fast last time. I don't. Shot, which down? <laughs> Yeah, which time? I, I shoot people down all the time. <laughs> I killed a pull request really fast last night. 
That was that was impressive, man. That was three minutes or something. Um. Oh, Dur- Sean, during three nine. Not moving them. Oh, okay. Um. The yeah, well, during three nine. The, well, the problem during three nine is that I had two changes mixed together. This and uh, bringing adding some of the headers to set up, I think. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I kind of, yeah, I agree with Jacob. Basically, I don't think it's a big deal if we break people this way because it's, you know, it's extremely likely that you're, you're already, well, it's highly likely. I won't say extremely likely. Um, that you, you already have to muck with stuff to move to a new version. If you install it and you use the you know the Wix environment variable, then maybe not. But um, I'd be fine with duplicating it, except I I can't come up with an easy way of doing that without duplicating authoring somehow or doing a for each or something nasty like that. Um, I'm, I'm not. Ideal. I'm also okay with leaving this as is for three and only making the change in four. Yeah, I don't. I'm not torn. It's just it's a bug. I don't like the consistency, but you know, I don't really care a whole lot either. So, I don't have strong opinions. Anybody else have strong opinions? Sean, Jake's gonna be like. Tobias, is that a, like no opinion or don't do it? I need like a, a minus one, <laughs> a zero, or a plus one. Basically, thumbs up or thumbs down. And on the bug itself. I guess you could pick option one. Makes no difference to me, all right? So, Tobias. But fix it right, no dupes. So Jake is like, do it right or don't do it. And Sean's like, I don't care, duplicate it. <laughs> All right. Well, fewer people see it as a breaking change than I guess I would have thought. You have to, because your build won't just build when you upgrade. You'll have to change it. Yeah, that's true. Although, also, I don't know. I guess I saw it as a bigger deal that they were inconsistent. Which more people seem to be, you know, not caring a whole lot about. I don't know how often you switch between installed and non-installed. Like you do that once uh, and then you're done. Right? Yeah, true, true. Because Votive will 